This is the Tegart LMEA9 adapter. It is the second generation magical adapter that allows you to use a M mount or many other mount manifocus lenses on your Sony camera with autofocus support. In this video, we'll have a look at how this adapter works. I will test this adapter with a few M mount and other mount lenses. And I will also share with you some of the tips about how to set up and use this adapter to get the best results. Hello, good morning everyone, which one here, welcome back to the channel. So let's start this video by have a look at the design of this new TechGuard LMEA9 adapter first. The magic behind the TechGuard MTE autofocus adapter is that the adapter would move the attached lens forward and that will shift the focus plane. So that turns the manual focus lens into an autofocus lens. So that requires a motor inside the adapter to push the lens. With the original TechGuard Pro LMEA7 adapter, there is a big piece here that is sitting at the bottom of the adapter and that's where the motor is. And now with the new LMEA9 adapter, there is no longer that extruded piece at the bottom. So that is great because not only aesthetically design is a lot cleaner, this new TechGuard LMEA9 is just look pretty much like a normal thumb adapter. The overall size of the adapter is a lot smaller. With the original TechGuard Pro adapter, when you mount it on a Sony camera, the bottom of the adapter would extrude below the bottom of the camera. So that means the camera can't sit flat when you put it on a desk, for example. The front of the camera would either tilt up or if the lens is too heavy, then the front would just tilt down. So it's not very good, of course. But with the new LMEA9, this is not a problem at all as there's nothing extruding at the bottom. The camera can just sit very nicely on a flat surface. The inside center of the adapter has felt fabric material to minimize refraction and lens flare. Apart from the electronic contacts at the back of the adapter here, there's no PCB or any other electronic components exposed to the outside. So this adapter just feels very, very high quality. The reason why the new adapter doesn't have the extruded bottom motor part is because instead of using a single large motor like the previous version, it is now replaced by four smaller stepper motors. This should potentially fix or at least improve one issue that the original adapter has. Some users have reported that there could be a bit of wobbling issue after using the original TechUp Pro adapter for a long period of time because with the original design, all the weight is applied to just one loading pawn only. With the new design, the load should share around four pawns. So in theory, it is a much more balanced designed and it should minimize the robbering issue. I said it should because I didn't really tear this adapter apart and examine the internal design and I haven't got a chance to use this adapter for a few years to confirm if I experienced the robbering issue or not. But if you have bought this new adapter, please drop a comment below and share with me your experience. You may wonder if the new smaller motors would affect the ability to use heavier lenses. According to TechArt, the new LMEA9 can support lenses up to 500 gram or 2 kilogram if the user supports the weight of the lens using his hand. I didn't really test the limit, but I have tested with a few lenses. Some are pretty heavy and I'm going to share with you the results very soon. Before I show you the test results, let me quickly talk about how to use this adapter as there are some important steps that you need to learn and there are also some tips that I want to share with you. The first thing you need to do after mounting the adapter and the lens and turn on the camera is to program the focal length of the lens to allow the camera's IBIS to work correctly. To do that, switch the camera to A mode and follow this table and take a photo at the aperture size that is corresponding to your lens focal length. For example, if you are using a 35mm lens, then change the aperture to f5.6. Take a photo, change the aperture to f2 and take another photo. Then now you can check the photo's EXIF data and it should say the focal length of your lens. 
and that's all you need to do and you should just leave the camera's aperture setting at f2 when you are taking your photos. If you switch off the camera, you don't need to program it again as the adapter would remember the previous setting. If you change your lens, then you need to program it again to match the new focal length. There are three special aperture values that you can set. F45 will set the adapter's position when you switch off the camera to either infinity or unchanged. F51 would set the operation to normal mode, which gives you faster autofocus speed, but it may not work that well with ultra fast lenses. So if you are shooting with an ultra fast lens, then set to f57 and that will decrease the focusing speed, but it should be more suitable when shooting with an ultra fast lens at the maximum aperture. However, probably because I'm testing this adapter before it is launched, so these settings they don't really seem to be fully working yet, at least with the firmware that I'm using when I'm working on this review. One question a lot of people may ask is, what is the focus distance that I should set on the lens itself? Should I set it to the closest focus distance or set it to infinity or somewhere in between? The instructions that I got from Tech Art also didn't tell us what to do, so I did a bit of testing, and this is the conclusion that I have. For the best performance, you should set the lens focus distance to slightly more than the furthest distance that you will want to focus on. So for example, if you are shooting at an indoor place and everything that you want to shoot is between say one to three meter distance, then set the focus distance on the lens to about three meter or just slightly more than that. And that should allow the adapter to focus on everything in between those distance. If you are shooting outdoor and mainly just shooting landscape for example, then set the focus distance to infinity and the adapter would be able to focus everything that is far away. And the reason is that what the adapter does is basically push the lens further away from the sensor than it normally would be, which effectively make the lens focus closer. But the adapter cannot pull the lens closer to the sensor than it normally would be, so it cannot make the lens focus further away than the focus setting you set on the lens. I hope that makes sense. So why not just set the focus distance on the lens to infinity all the time? Well, you could and that will work most of the time, but there is a bit of caveat. When your subject is really close, but the lens focus is set at infinity, then the adapter has to push the lens forward by quite a bit of distance. That will make the autofocus speed a bit slower. And because there is only limited amount of travel that the adapter can push the lens, which is 4.5 millimeter to be precise. So you may not be able to focus very close subjects if you set the lens focus to infinity. Because of that, I do recommend you to adjust the focus on the lens accordingly when you are shooting. It may sound a bit tedious, but you don't have to be super precise. If you want to be a bit lazy, you could just set the focus to around 3 meters or so when you are shooting close-up scenes or set to infinity when your subject is further away. Even with just these two stage far close focus settings should give you good enough performance and allow you to focus on the subject that you are shooting. One pretty important thing about this kind of adapter is that the manufacturers would usually release a few firmware updates to improve the performance and also fix some of the issues. With the original TechCut Pro LMEA7 adapter, it is up to firmware 6.0 and that original adapter uses Bluetooth with the TechArt app installed on your smartphone to update firmware wirelessly, which sounds like a really good idea, but in practice, you quite often will have connection issues. So with this new LMEA9 adapter, TechArt has switched to use a USB dock, which is also the rear cover of the adapter. So you just need to download the update software and install it onto your computer. It supports both Mac and Windows. Then connect the USB dock to your computer and you can then update the firmware. It is pretty straightforward process. The USB dock is made of metal and it feels very nice. However, one thing I don't really like is that it still uses the micro USB connector. I think all new hardware releases in 2022 should really use the USB-C connector. And this is not the first time I say something like this on this channel. 
To be fair, in practice, it doesn't really matter as the USB dock doesn't really need a lot of power and it doesn't need to do high speed data transfer. But it just personally, I don't like the micro USB connector at all. Okay, now let's have a look at the performance of this Tekka LM EA9 adapter. And since I currently don't have any Sony camera with me, so I went to see my friends at the Auckland Camera Center again to try out the adapter with the Sony cameras that they have there. Big thanks to Auckland Camera Center for the help and supporting this channel. I put a link to their website in the video description below if you want to support them. So I picked the Sony A7 IV as the body that I use for most of the tests in this review, and I test the adapter with a few different M1 lenses. The first one is the 7 Artisan 28mm f5.6 lens which I've reviewed recently. It is quite a small lightweight lens and not particularly fast. Maximum aperture is only f5.6. So I tested the adapter with the lens at f5.6. The autofocus works. The autofocus speed is a bit slow but still quite usable. And even when I stop down the lens to the minimum aperture f22, the adapter still works fine even I was just shooting indoor inside a shop. Then I switched to the new TT Artisan 35mm f2 APO lens. I choose this lens because partly I'm working on a review of this lens, but it's also quite a heavy lens that is over 500 gram. It is a bit faster and also a little bit longer focal length, so it should be more demanding than the 7 Artisan 28mm that I just tested before. And with this TT Artisan lens, autofocus works very well. The autofocus speed is actually even faster than the previous test I did with the 7 Artisan 28mm lens. When shooting in AFS mode, it will lock on the target pretty quickly and accurately. Now with all this autofocus adapter that allows you to use a lens from a different mount, there is usually a limitation, that is, you have to use the autofocus point that is close to the center of the frame to get the best result. And with this TechArt LM EA9, it is the same as well. With the autofocus point set to the center, I've just shown you before that it works quite well. If I move the autofocus area three points away from the center, the autofocus still works quite well. But when I move the autofocus area three more points away from the center, so a total of six points from the center, then the autofocus doesn't really work anymore, or very low success rate at least. So this is one of the limitations that you need to be aware of. The other limitation of this Tekka adapter is that autofocus doesn't work in video mode, unfortunately. When I change the camera to video mode, the focus mode would immediately change to manual focus. I'm not sure whether this is something that Tekka can improve in the future, but at least for now, this is a photo-only autofocus adapter. This is a bit of shame because when I test the adapter in photo mode and switch to AFC, the continuous autofocus actually works very well. I won't say it is smooth like a native Eman lens, but consider what the adapter is doing, I really have no complaint at all about its continuous autofocus performance. It is smoother and a lot more stable than many other autofocus adapters that I have tried in the past. Then I tested with the Voilander 50mm f1.1 M1 lens. This is a big test for the adapter as the 50mm focal length with the f1.1 maximum aperture means very shallow depth of view. And the lens weighs 428 grams, so it's not a small lens to move. Turns out the adapter works very well with this lens as well. Here are some test results I got when shooting at f1.1, both in AFS and AFC mode. I have to say it works really quite well even with such a fast aperture.
The only thing I notice is when I try to log on to my closest subject, the autofocus does hesitate a little bit, but usually it can still log on to the subject successfully. It may be because I set the focus distance to a bit over 5 meter on the lens, but the closest subject is just about 1 meter or so away, so that's almost the minimum focus distance of the lens. I've also tested the other autofocus mode and they all work pretty well, even the IAF works, but I do find the IAF performance is not quite as good, especially when I'm shooting at f1.1. I'm not sure if it's the camera or the adapter, but it just struggled a little bit. I think it is not completely unexpected. 50mm focal length at f1.1 at close distance means the depth of field is ridiculously narrow. When I stop down the lens to f2, then the autofocus would work quite a bit better. I've also done a bit of comparison between this new Tekka LMEA9 and the original Tekka Pro LMEA7 adapter. I just want to see if there's any difference in terms of autofocus speed and performance. I would say I don't really notice any difference in terms of autofocus speed. They seem very similar to me, but I do notice one big difference and that is the autofocus noise. The original Tekka Pro adapter is really quite noisy. And actually, it wasn't until I do the side-by-side -side test that I realized how quiet this new LMEA9 adapter is. The LMEA9 is not completely silent. I can still hear a bit of autofocus noise, but testing these two adapters together and I noticed the original one is just way louder than the new one. Now, the good thing with a M mount adapter is you can adapt most other manifocus SLR lenses using a cheap dumb adapter on top of it. It's because pretty much all the SLR lenses have longer French distance than the M mount. So I tried my Nikon 50mm f1.2 AIS mini focus lens with a Nikon F2 M mount adapter on top of the tech out adapter. I test the setup at f1.2 and once again it works really quite well as well. Even when I switch to AFC mode, it still works very smoothly when I move the camera and point it to different targets. It took tech out seven years to release this second generation autofocus M mount to E mount adapter, and it's pretty easy to see why it took them so long. Putting the original version adapter and the new version side by side, the original version suddenly looks more like a prototype product with the big focus motor sitting outside the ring. The new LMEA9 just has a much more refined, more polished design. I still don't know how they fit the four motors inside this adapter ring, but no matter how they achieve it, it can't be easy as it can still handle some pretty heavy lenses easily, and also it is a lot more quiet than the original version. TechArt has also made a few other improvements that I haven't mentioned in this review. For example, the new version doesn't drain your camera's battery when you turn off the camera, which the original version does. So overall, this is definitely a much more improved product than the original version. And the fact that you can just add a dumb adapter and use it with pretty much any old SLR lenses and turn them into autofocus lens means even if you don't have any M mount lenses, but you have a few old SLR manual focus lenses sitting somewhere and collecting dust, this adapter could bring a new life to those old lenses as well. But before you go and order one straight away, I do want to remind you that there are limitations on what this adapter can do, and it's still more like a semi autofocus adapter than a fully autofocus adapter, so you should adjust the focus ring a little bit to help the adapter to focus. 
But to me, even with all these limitations, it's still a pretty amazing product and I'm still not sure how TechArt managed to achieve all these inside such a compact adapter.